It's a, a pleasure to be here and to talk about a, a subject that I, is, I really uh, believe in. Um, I'm a physician from the United States. You can tell from my accent. I trained in California and ultimately worked at the Centers for Disease Control as an epidemic intelligence service officer uh, around the world. Ultimately married an Australian and uh, came to uh, WA seven years ago. So my duties here in WA are infe in infectious disease control and also uh, running the state's immunization program. And I, th I think it's important for you to know what, as I give this talk that I don't have uh, any stock holdings, unfortunately no stock holdings, but not in pharmaceutical companies, don't take any payments from pharmaceutical companies, do not allow them to buy me dinners or uh, go to conferences. So everything I say will be based on, uh, on the uh, available evidence as, as I see it from a medical perspective. And the two subjects we're gonna cover in just this 20 minutes are influenza vaccinations and pertussis vaccinations. And the pertussis is a new recommendation. Uh, the, the other word for that is whooping cough. That's what people know it as uh, primarily. I'll probably use the word pertussis more often than I say whooping cough just because of uh, uh, I default to old habits. All right, so let's, let's talk about why immunizations are important for, uh, for pregnant women. Uh, essentially, when you are pregnant, your body's immune system tones itself down a little bit because it doesn't want to reject the fetus. The, the baby is only half your genetic material, and so you're creating proteins that are actually different than your, uh, your body's proteins, uh, I, the baby is. And so therefore, the uh, T cell immunity uh, is decreased. The other thing that makes women at risk of severe influenza infection is that they're physiologically challenged later in pregnancy because the, the baby pushes up on the diaphragm so they can't inspire as well, can't breathe in as well, and also there's a lot more cardiac output that has to happen uh, to make sure the, the baby uh, is, is well nourished uh, through the placenta. So those two things make it so that women, uh, pregnant women can do poorly when they get influenza, which you know, usually in an adult is, is relatively benign illness for the most part, but we know from uh, pandemics and uh, even influenza seasons, that if you compare pregnant women to non-pregnant women that are of the same age and you know other, other health status, pregnant women end up in the ICU from influenza at a surprisingly alarming rate. So that's why there's a re been a recommendation for a number of years now uh, to vaccinate pregnant women. The other benefit of being vaccinated when you are a pregnant woman is to protect your baby, right? See, the uh, kids under six months of age have very high attack rates for influenza and end up being hospitalized at a higher rate than any other age group. I'll, I'll show you this. They, they also have the highest uh, death rate from flu. This is data from the Australian Immunization Handbook and it shows the rates of infection and the rates of hospitalization, those two bars, at a five year age group. This is 85 year olds. 85 year olds don't have the attack rate or the hospitalization rate of very young kids. And the youngest kids, you see here zero to, zero to one, have absolutely the highest rates. So we always think of flu as being a disease of uh, old people when really every year is a pandemic of influenza in, the very, young ch in very young children. So there, was, there have been recommendations to vaccinate pregnant women for flu for quite some time, um, but it really, the impact had not been, the recommendations came out before the impact was methodically studied. So in the US and other countries that had recommendations like Australia, like uh, the UK, you couldn't ethically do a, a double blind randomized controlled trial because it was already recommended they get it. So you couldn't deny it to somebody I in a study. So what, what was done is they did a, a study in Bangladesh where there was no existing recommendation and, and they vaccinated uh, some women with influenza vaccine and some women got a pneumococcal 23 vaccine that doesn't work against a flu at all. Um, and, but the doctors didn't know who was getting which vaccine and the patients didn't know who was getting which vaccine. So it's the highest standard of evidence that we have, a randomized con double blind control trial. And then they followed those, their babies through time. And what you see here in the non-vaccinated, the ones that didn't get flu vaccine, this is the number of infants that got influenza compared to the, uh, the ones that were vaccinated, the uh, proportion here. And so it, it it demonstrated clearly that vaccinating women while they are pregnant protects their children. There's, a, there's no other explanation for this result. And ultimately what that study shows, which was published I think in 2008 and in the New England Journal of Medicine, is that you reduce laboratory confirmed influenza 63% in children and 70% in their mothers. 
So it isn't perfect, but given it's a pretty uh, simple intervention, uh, inexpensive intervention, it, it's a dramatic, dramatic impact. And there is some evidence that it actually reduces preterm labor and small for gestational age. And we are actually studying this in WA right now, and that's what we are finding, that babies born to women who are, are vaccinated against influenza uh, are, have higher birth weights. So, and that's probably because if you get flu, you divert energy and attention to uh, actually addressing the infection at the time, and you alter your hormones uh, for feeding the fetus. So what, what does that mean here in, uh, in Australia? So in 2009, we have Australia come out with a, a, a RANS call recommendation, and that's the Royal Australia New Zealand College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, saying that every woman should be vaccinated against flu. Um, it's offered in the pandemic, comes out in 2011, and then in 2012, WA Health uh, put out an operational di directive saying every woman that's cared for in our facility should be offered influenza vaccine for free. And then later that year, the World Health Organization got uh, together flu experts from around the world to look at all flu vaccinations in every group and decide what, where the priorities would be. And what came out of that is in countries that don't have flu programs, pregnant women are the highest priority. When you look at all the evidence, the, the, the impact is greatest in vaccinating pregnant women to pre keep them out of the hospital and keep their children uh, out of the hospital as well. So now it is the leading recommendation worldwide. So we've promoted this to uh, obstetricians, GPs, and midwives. But unfortunately, this graph shows you, uh, well, there's some good news in there, could be some better news. This is uh, 2012 to 2014. We do a survey of women after they deliver to find out if they were vaccinated for flu and why. And what you see is providers recommending it has gone up quite a bit, but it's still only 60%. So not all providers are realizing that this is now standard of care in Australia. And then vaccination rates are about 40%. So most women are still not being vaccinated against influenza to protect their children. And we really want to address that given the quality of the existing evidence. Now, is it safe? That's obviously the primary concern. Uh, we have uh, been vaccinating women against flu in many countries for multiple years and have millions and millions of uh, 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 person years of experience, but we still monitor here in WA. We actually, if you are vaccinated and you, and you want follow-up, we get your mobile phone number and we send you a text seven days afterwards and then you tell us whether you had a reaction and if you say yes, it comes with a smartphone survey. So we closely monitor what's going on and essentially we haven't seen any issues with safety uh, in the flu vaccine in WA or worldwide. It's not a live virus vaccine. It can't, it can't give you the flu, and it can't infect the baby with, the, with influenza. Okay, so that's influenza. Now I would like to um, switch to pertussis. And this is a brand new recommendation in Australia for March of this year. And uh, unfortunately, um, it's, it comes about through tragedy. Uh, the light for Riley uh, Booth is right there, and this is Riley Hughes, who got pertussis whooping cough and died at four weeks of age. And um, his parents have become very uh, strong supporters of trying to make sure that uh, other children will be protected against pertussis. So let's talk about pertussis a little bit and why it's so, uh, so important to protect newborns. We go through waves of pertussis in Australia, and this is WA's data. You can see we were in an outbreak in 2011 and 12, and we've come down a little bit, but we're probably gonna go back into another outbreak. Essentially, it's cyclical. It goes through the population, makes a bunch of people immune for a while, and then uh, more, more, uh, more people are born, and then it spreads through the population again. So we are due for uh, having a, a resurgence soon. And what's terrible about this disease is this red line is the rate. It affects the youngest children the most. They have higher attack rates, just like influenza. The zero to two months, uh, three to five months, have the highest attack rates for pertussis of, of any age group. And when do they get it? This, this is West Australian data showing the confirmed uh, pertussis infections. Most of them get it well before they could be protected through vaccination themselves, the infant, because they're getting it before their first dose of uh, 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 pertussis-containing vaccine at two months, four months, and six months, 
we think you'd need a couple doses as a child to be protected. So these kids are, are absolutely vulnerable uh, early in life. And what does it do to young kids? It causes pneumonia. It causes uh, them to go through periods where they don't breathe. They can cough so much that then they vomit. And that, that's the whoop, why we call it whooping cough, is they cough so much they run out of air and they suck air in there. <gasps> Basically, that's that sound. And in a young child, it's a, it makes a really classic uh, whoop. The, um, you can go on to get uh, uh, seizures from the toxins produced and, and brain inflammation as well. So infants that are hospitalized with pertussis, about two-thirds of them will go through these periods where they don't breathe after coughing, which obviously isn't good for them. Uh, about a quarter will develop pneumonia, and one to two percent will die. And your chances of dying from pertussis is directly related to the size of your trachea. And that's why those little uh, newborns or preemies or young babies uh, are at, at, at serious risk. And this data from the United States, uh, it, where they have more cases just because it's a larger population, shows that of the deaths for pertussis in the U.S., 83% of them happen in children under three months of age. And they, again, these children can't be protected by vaccination themselves at this point. So where do the infants get their pertussis? They usually get it from a family member, often the mother because she spends the most time with the child. But they can get it from fathers, grandparents, other children. So there's many avenues for um, uh, bringing infection into the home. So now why do we want to vaccinate women? Well, the pregnant women. The rationale is pretty much the same as for influenza. We want to reduce the chance that the mom gets it and would give it to the child, sure. But what we really want to do is have those antibodies cross the placenta in utero and, and, uh, and get, be there for the child when they're born. So uh, uh, the placenta really starts moving antibodies from the mother to the fetus at about 30 weeks. That's when it really kicks in heavy. So if we vaccinate women in the last trimester, somewhere between 28 and you know, 32 weeks, they will create a response to that vaccine. They will create antibodies in their body, get high, high titers, high amounts, we call that, and move them to protect the fetus. So the first thing you got to ask yourself before you consider being vaccinated is, is this going to be safe to give in pregnancy? Well, uh, Australia came into this uh, just this year, but actually in October 2012, the United States and the United Kingdom decided to do this even without much evidence, just knowing they had to do something to try and protect young kids. And so now we have good data coming from the US and the, and the UK on both safety and effectiveness. And what you see in the safety study that was done, this one was done again as a randomized cl clinical trial, so high standard of evidence, that there were no vaccine uh, associated adverse events in the, in the women or their infants. And so they vaccinated some women when they were pregnant, some women right after they delivered, and then they compared the reactions between them, and it's absolutely the same. So there's nothing to suggest that there's any issues with being pregnant. And growth and development uh, were similar in both children born to both groups. So there's no, nothing to suggest there's a safety issue with that. Now that it's being used a lot, we have large observational studies. This one with 20,000 uh, women in the UK, again, where they looked at a lot of outcomes. Sorry. And there's no increase of maternal death, neonatal death, preeclampsia, hemorrhage, fetal disorders, uterine rupture, placenta previa, cesarean delivery, low birth weight, or renal failure in women who are vaccinated compared to women who aren't vaccinated. So it's pretty, it's, it's, uh, again, it's not a live vaccine. It can't give you pertussis. Uh, it can give you a sore arm. That's what the pertussis vaccine is, is well known for because your body reacts to that, the, the vaccine and creates an immune response. So now the second question is, uh, we're, we're comfortable that it's safe based on the available data. Is it effective? And this is really, really good news. And there's been two studies that have been done, both in Europe, done with different methodologies. So I like the convergence of the evidence. You, do, you study it different ways and you get the same answer that uh, lends credibility to the results. Vaccinating women in one of the studies, vaccinating pregnant women was 93% effective at protecting their infant in the first two months of life. Uh, from getting pertussis, and that's uh, against laboratory proven endpoints, and that's a, that's a phenomenal result for that. And then the second study, as I mentioned, done a different way, where about 60% of the cohort was vaccinated. It was 91% effective at protecting uh, uh, babies against getting pertussis in the first three months of life. 
So both of the uh, convergence of the data, 90% or better protection from being vaccinated and pregnant, it's clearly the way to go. And I just wish we'd had this program up and running before uh, Riley Hughes' tragic outcome. So that's a recommendation to get a single dose in every pregnancy. Um, the optimal time to get it's in the third trimester, somewhere between uh, 20 and 32 weeks, because that's when you're going to really boot your antibodies and move them along to the, to the baby. Um, we, we are recommending that you get it at every pregnancy. So if you should get pregnant two years from now, you should get another pertussis vaccination because you want to have those antibody titers be really high so you can move them to the child and protect them. And you can give the pertussis vaccine and the flu vaccine at the same visit. There's no reason, you don't, you don't have to space them out. We've done, this year we've done uh, safety studies on that and we find that the reaction rate in people that get both vaccines on the same day is no different than people that get them separately. This has strong support here in Western Australia. We're lucky that the head of the AMA is actually a practicing obstetrician and he, and he firmly believes this uh, in vaccinating for both flu and pertussis based on the, on the data that we have in hand. So how's it going in WA? I'm just, just about to close up here with my slides. We've had a phenomenal result. And un unfortunately, I think some of the phenomenal uptake has really been because of the tragedy that the Hughes has uh, suffered. But this is when we started the program in March and essentially the number of pregnant women that have been vaccinated in WA, we are running about 60% coverage for pertussis vaccine in pregnancy, which we're pretty happy with given that's what the UK is getting after two years of running a, a program. We hope to get it higher. That's obviously why I'm here today to talk to you and uh, answer, answer questions. Uh, thanks for your attention.